Jada G leaves Berlin for London. This is this is pretty interesting. I, I I've only heard of this now actually. Uh, Jada G, who I, f- I think I featured a couple of times the year before, right on the on the podcast regarding um, just how you know how she approached things when it came to her deck mantle set, the kind of conflict that she was having in terms of dealing with the fame post deck mantle and dealing with that sort of stuff. Has kind of given a short interview with um, Electronic Beats where she essentially details her decision to move away from Berlin back to London, which you don't really hear a lot about. You hear a lot of people moving from Berlin to other European cities or going to other maybe more exotic locations, but to come back to London or to come to London in the first place is a very strange um, decision to do, especially considering the fact that Berlin, for the most part, is, you know, for some Londoners who are part of the scene, who want to be involved in the electronic music space, is the kind of, like, the mecca of that kind of um of that kind of lifestyle um to be an art to be a bohemian artist hippie dippy whatever it may be that's the place that you would go and do it right to kind of suspend belief and essentially become an adult or essentially um uh, continue your life as an adult child right no real responsibilities cost of living is real low um a big social network of people who are also trying to find their way and fumbling through life it's just essentially it's made it's kind of um constructed or made uh possible not made possible but it's uh put together in a way where it kind of allows people who want to live that kind of lifestyle to do it to the fullest extent and of course on the other side of it it also has all the distractions in terms of clubs in terms of nightlife in terms of drugs in terms of drinking that would also make you go the other way right so you can easily get lost in the source so it's kind of a weird balance in it but jdg decided to do the other thing around and kind of move away from it so let's kind of quickly go through the conversation and hear what she has to say around it um so this is jdg here in his article, a, Jada G, a conversation with Jada G about Berlin's significant changes in environmental t- toxicology. Jada D is a Canadian DJ and environmental toxicologist known for her euphoric house and disco sets. She released significant changes, her debut LP on Ninja Tune earlier this year, which is, you don't really hear that as a byline of a DJ, right? Someone that is a DJ, put on LP and also studies environmental environmental toxicology. Pretty, pretty cool. So here it is, right? Um, this is a Jada G interview. The question. When did you get your new place in London and how is it how's it going? How's the move going? Um I moved last July right after I toured for six days. I had to go play the weekend night after I got to London. Was it hard to leave Berlin? Um yes and no. In June I was chilling in Berlin and met all these new people I thought I maybe could build a community with and maybe I can deal with the German language. But as soon as I moved to London, it was like, oh yeah, this is the best decision. I wouldn't have changed going to Berlin for the world. It essentially changed my life, but it was a hard change. It was a hard place to live. I can't knock the Berlin experience. I learned what I'm capable of it. I'm capable of. It really made me appreciate where I come from and what it's like to be a foreign person in a foreign country. It's really difficult to move to another place where you don't speak the language and you don't understand the culture, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. And I think that's a very good point. I think um, as much as I love Berlin, I have a lot of love for it. And it's a place that I've always kind of held close to my heart. I think after maybe the third or fourth time, I realized quite quickly that it probably isn't the place that I'd want to live in day to day. I think if I had, if I, once I get the ability to buy a place here in London and maybe buy other properties, my dr- my dream is to eventually buy a flat or property in Berlin so that every time I wanted to go and party for the summer, I could easily just go chill out, have a place to stay in. And then in the winter months, I could rent it out on Airbnb because obviously there's a big demand for those kind of properties over there. But I realized it wasn't for me day to day because essentially all the vices that I'm prone to indulging in in London are already available to you in Berlin. And societally, um, the attitude around partying and going out isn't as frowned upon as it is here in the UK. Even though people here party and get fucked up in the UK, in Berlin and these kind of places on a whole different level, right? People are just going out and getting fucked up continuously, basically all week round, right? Um, especially if you have the means to do it, especially if you are part of a community that encourages it. It's something that you can easily get yourself trapped into. And of course, part of the allure of it is that go through getting through that kind of through you living that CD underground lifestyle, you might eventually have the possibility to also connect with a little community of people that actually inspire you to start a label, start a studio, open up a business. Um, whatever it may be but there is you know that's that kind of little um pot of gold at the end of the rainbow but for the most of the time you're just going to end up getting fucked up and being involved in that debaucherous lifestyle so i realize it's the place for me to go and dip in and dip out but i also think in general if you're because i think reading past jada g interviews if she strikes me as a person who enjoys djing enjoys you know um being amongst the electronic music scene and being an artist but 
she has bigger goals things aims out bigger that outweigh the kind of stuff that she's doing in music and if you read the rest of the interview you'll see clearly she's got a lot of ideas um, that are far bigger than what she's doing as being a dj behind the decks so because of that maybe she's not as infatuated or as in love or as head over heels um about the idea of going out to some cd nightclub somewhere in, in the middle of berlin and getting fucked up it's not that much of a big or a lot to her she essentially djing is a, is a is a job that she loves but it's essentially still just a job so because of that, I can imagine why Berlin would be a bit hard to kind of deal with. And because, you know, you haven't kind of grown up kind of, you know, idolizing or fantasizing about living there like I have over the years. And also just in general, like as well, she mentioned about the language is something that you don't really realize a lot. But the language is a big hurdle, especially if you're actually trying to live there day to day. Yes, you can have a community of people that speak English. And you can just hang around, and do your thing. But um, I'm I'm of the thinking, especially most British people, I think for the most part, we're quite cognitive or we're quite conscious of the fact that when we go to new countries, we want to know some bits of the language, right? How many people in Britain, how many English people have you bumped into going traveling around Southeast Asia, around Central America like I have? And you bumped into them and most of the people have some command of a little bit of language, right? Whether it's a bit of Spanish, a bit of Vietnamese, right? We always try to make an effort, I feel as if like most British people that I meet. Obviously, there's some people that don't make an effort, but for the most part, British people around my kind of age range, you are very conscious about integrating properly into a city or into a place that you're living. So, but German language isn't the most easy language to learn, even though people that learn languages say that the Germanic language is quite similar. It's the, probably the easiest language to learn closest to English. Usually, I don't know why grammar wise, but getting to grips with learning German is probably hard, especially when you are in that party lifestyle and you haven't got a consistent schedule and you're not going to study as much and you know usually when you move there you don't really have a command of the language it can be hard to deal with and getting a house set up sorting out your bank your residency documents especially if you go through the reddit there's a berlin subreddit that kind of goes through people moving away to berlin and you can kind of see how difficult it is to kind of get yourself situated and get your feet under the table i can see how difficult it can be but i'm happy that she was been she's been so open about how difficult it's been because i think sometimes people can romanticize that experience a lot and i still think that most places even london is a good example they are they do you it, it requires a certain kind of personality a certain type of character trait a certain type of drive to make it work because on the same on the same side of you know you go to berlin and it's full of you know debaucherous activities and nightlife you know on tap when you come back to london it's not as if you saw what sort of roses in right do you know what i mean like if you come to london in your day to g you might end up bumping into a group of people who are despite who kind of um, not despise you, but who have reservations about inviting you into a social group because you might take away all their gigs. Um, there's a lot of famine thinking in the UK. People are very close. People are very clo um, close fists with their opportunities or the chance they want to give away. Unless you have obviously a good group of people that can show you in, but it takes a lot of time to warm people to break into. It, it takes a lot of time to warm people up in London to make sure to make them your friends, right, or to to infiltrate their com their social group. People in London are very, very standoffish. So in the same way in Berlin, where the language barrier doesn't allow you to kind of maybe integrate yourself more, you're usually more able to kind of happenstance bump into groups of people that are able to take you up to different parties and meet you, connect you to different people. But in London, the doors are a bit closed. Obviously, once you're in, you're in. But once you're out, you're out. You really do feel like out. So it's not as if like it's not without its risk coming back. But it's definitely cool to see that she decided, you know what, even though... Because I can imagine after LP come out and all the Dickman stuff come out, she probably had gigs coming out of her ass in Berlin, right? Loads of opportunities. You can fly to different places around Europe. So to decide to come out to London and pay exorbitant amount of rent again and all that stuff, it might it must have been a hard decision to make. But in general, you know, you have to do what's best for your career going forward. Um, here's what she says as well. Um, the, the interview continues. It's nice to hear your perspective on living in Berlin. I think many realities of living in the city take a while to unfold. And it's nice when the thoughts are given space. Do you have any examples of how the language barrier was a problem as a DJ? Um, which is something you don't hear a lot about people talking about, right? Really, in general, like, you know, things do take time to unfold. Like, you think it's all... It's like the honeymoon period, right, in a relationship. Then after time, you start actually living with a person day to day. And you start realizing, oh, shit, I hate the way you yawn. Do you know what I mean? It has to, you have to kind of live with it over a period of time. Anyway, here's her answer. Um, I didn't partake so much in the party culture because the language barrier made me feel unsafe in most instances and did not, which is very something, again, you don't think about if you're not a girl, right? Imagine <clears throat> moving to a place like Germany and being a fairly attractive girl like J2G and then not knowing where, you know, not knowing the situation that you're in, in a party because the language barrier or the lack of understanding of cultural norms is kind of throwing off a bit. You just would rather just, you know what, I'm not going to get blacked out drunk because I don't know what's going to happen to me when I wake up. 
or I don't know what, what state I'm going to be in when I wake up. So I'd rather just kind of step away from it. And it kind of takes you out the moment, isn't it, as well? So it's, it must have been a hard decision to do. Anyway, she continues. For instance, I was going out in London the other night and some guy was going around touching people and being disrespectful. Most of the women noticed immediately and had security take him out. Cool. A issue done, solved, and, and, you know, finito. In Berlin, I wouldn't know if the person was malicious or just open, open sexuality, sexually because I didn't, couldn't communicate well enough. Um, last time we spoke you mentioned you had a new manager and overall team could you speak on your career changes so far things have changed quite a bit since 2007 in the boiler room I started playing bigger shows more people recognised me but things have changed rapidly in 2019 to a point where I can't even really process what's happened because I've been working through changes but I've had to adapt quite quickly the team is really new I'm fortunate enough to have the people working with me I work well with my manager and his assistant and that's been good the biggest thing that no one talks about is an artist is, have, is what happens when you release a successful debut album. As an artist, you start by creating the content, you set the stage, you get the idea of what you are, of what you're creating, and you try to produce w- work that you makes you happy. When you finally have something to show for it, then you throw it out to the world. Woohoo! Yay! It's done. I didn't realize what kind of aftermath there would be, and that's when having a manager comes in handy. When you are working with a label, which was which has been new for me because I've been self-releasing with underground labels until now. Immediately, as soon as I landed in the work, things amped up considerably. Then I had to start working to big decisions while learning a new way of communicating with the music industry. It's an entire culture. That's pretty cool. So the first bit about being a girl and understanding how to maneuver in different places is something that I'm happy she brought about. I think nowadays, especially with social media, especially with um, communities such as Reddit, you are you would be remiss or you would be doing yourself a big disservice to move to a new city without kind of reaching out and going on the city subreddit or finding a hashtag somewhere on social media especially on twitter and asking questions be like hey i'm a young girl i'm I'm this age i'm coming from this background i'm moving away does anyone have experience of moving to this place or even going on youtube and find there's always somebody going to find on youtube who's moved to a certain location to get an idea of how it is because it must be difficult to maneuver these places because i imagine somewhere like a central america south america between for a woman and for a man will be totally different experiences so it's probably advantageous for you to kind of figure out how those places work for you personally um and then going forward as well with the release of the album and the aftermath of it that's something i've always wondered too um i know in music industry most people most labels and managers always say always treat your next record like the hit record right so kind of plan plan that well, everything that you drop is going to be the thing that's going to make you blow so that you have a plan in place because that's that's when planning actually matters the most right what you do after the the kind of initial blow up right um you saw it happen with russ um with that uh, best in the world when rihanna posted it and he went you had that song went completely kapoop you have to have the video in place which he already did he learned up some interviews um there's obviously the book in place there's a plan that looks like that it was in place after he dropped best in the world so that even if if best in the world didn't blow you could just add a couple of months into each plan and then you can kind of stretch it out but then if for instance by coincidence one of the biggest pop stars in the world and rihanna decides to make a video of your song then you can immediately start to like quicken the pace and start to drop all those announcements week by week but again it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort it takes some kind of foresight and also it takes managers agents uh people around in your circle um fighting your fight for you which comes back to the idea i said before of like you know if you're a kid out there and you're pursuing trying to be a dj or electronic music star maybe you might be best served instead of kind of going inside this kind of really completely crowded arena of being a dj maybe it's best served you kind of reaching out to someone like this or somebody that's on the come up and helping them out with their rollouts helping them out with their graphics helping them out with their placements helping them out with bookings whatever it may be or just being someone around that's helping a helping hand so you can kind of understand how the industry works from the inside working in and also you can kind of carve your own lane that isn't necessarily in the crowded lane of being a dj and i think a lot of people more people than not need these help like she said only recently jada g like she changed her management when in 2009 no in 2019 right she changed her managers so imagine all those years she needed help but from the outside looking in you think she's kind of got sort of things sorted out she's doing but she needs a lot of help she needs someone to assist her somebody to kind of give a bit of direction and for all the kids out there who are kind of you know scraping and scratching over you know only a certain amount of dj gigs maybe your time is best served setting up your own little agency right and representing local djs in your scene you kind of need a bit of assistance that'll kind of go a long way to kind of um pushing it forward but it's quite cool to see how she's kind of handled things going forward especially since the dick mantle thing um it seemed as if like it was a blessing and a curse right it kind of boosts your profile makes you a bigger person people start to want more from you start to be a little bit more needy um extracting the value exchange is a bit gross but over time you know 
a bit of a wild ride in Berlin, back in London. Now you get to again the Berlin move are probably appreciative too because even when you go through shared experiences, it does probably um focus your vision and your idea on what you actually want and now she knows exactly what she wants it's not what she was doing beforehand it's definitely what she's doing now and now we're probably going to see the best of it going forward so yeah i recommend you check it out it's a really fascinating interview the rest of it she speaks about her environmental toxicology work which i'm sure some of you guys will be interested in but i recommend you check it out debut lp is significant changes available now on all your streaming platforms or your digital streaming platforms dsps <laughs> and uh interview link i'll post in the show notes for you guys to check out